Hi, today we're going to go over the build of an EggFinder LCD GPS tracking receiver kit from EggTimer. Uh, this is the core piece of equipment for their entire tracking system. You have to have one of these to be able to receive the data from their trackers, uh, their telemetry devices. Um, you also need this to be able to program any of those devices. Um, and there are a whole, it's a modular system. There's a whole bunch of modules you can add to this uh, kit. Uh, besides the uh, the base system in order to add things like uh, voice uh, capabilities uh, to add a GPS to the actual receiver itself um, and a Bluetooth there are a number of other ones uh, so yeah you, you kind of have to have one of these this is my setup it's a Hako FM 203 uh, it, in this particular kit it's a big kit I'm gonna use a lot of the equipment you see here um, I have a static uh, anti-static mat made out of silicone uh, I use a couple pan devices. I've got my own Kester uh, 0.02 inch soldering wire, which is excellent stuff. Same stuff that Egg Timer sends you. Um, and I use a 0.5 millimeter conical uh, iron tip at about 680 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the package you get from Egg Timer. It's the standard blister pack. So we're going to inventory everything here. Uh, so open it up, get everything out on your workstation and do go through the inventory list this kit has a lot of components um, and a lot of, and some of the components may be some that you won't necessarily see in some of the other kits uh, that any timer sells so it is an excellent time to go through make sure you're familiar with all the parts uh, and pieces that come with this kit and um, and then later on uh, that that'll make your life a whole lot easier when you're trying to build things out and trying to find the particular part you need and in fact, a lot of these parts uh, do look very, very similar, especially with the capacitors and the uh, and the resistors. But uh, and, and in particular, the voltage regulators look identical. Um, and what we'll do as we go through here is we will label some of the parts. Um, I like to do that because it makes it a whole lot easier to, to identify them later when you're trying to uh, pick out which part to solder on next and not have that you know discrepancy that could ruin your whole build. So get everything out of the synthetic static bag, lay it out all on the uh, on your workspace, uh, and then grab your checklist and and actually physically check off each part as you identify it. And we're going to be going over the Rev B5 version of this kit. Uh, this was new as of 2022, and this is the main circuit board, the PCB that we'll be soldering all the components to. Uh, I don't think there's anything larger in the uh, egg timer inventory. That's a, it's a pretty big board. Uh, when it comes to egg timers. First uh, component up here is the RF module. Next up you have the Atmel processor. And then here we are with the with the voltage regulators. And as you can see they're literally identical. There's no difference except for the printing. So you have to look very closely uh, at the printing to make sure you're identifying which one is which. Once you have identified them, one is a 3 volt and 3.3 volt and one is a 5 volt. Um, I like to write that right on top of the package, right? So this is the 3 volt one and put that to the side and then take the other one and I'll write a 5 on that so I know it's the 5 volt one and that'll you know, save me, I hope, for myself later on down the road. Uh, you have a 16 megahertz resonator. It's a ceramic part. Uh, in the case of my kit, it was blue. Now we're going to look through some of these resistors. This is a uh, 1K resistor marked 102. You get two of them. You need one. Uh, this is a 10K resistor marked 103. You need three of those. You get four. Chris gives you an extra one on some of these so that in case you lose one. Uh, this is the potentiometer. Uh, for adjusting the contrast and then you get into the capacitors this is a 0.1 UF capacitor this is the paper carrier when when he says when the instructions describe paper carrier and this is the clear plastic carrier and these are the 10 UF and then you do have some 22 UF capacitors and these have a red this one has a red stripe <clears throat> the buzzer is pretty simple to identify and then you have some header strips uh, these are going to be for the LCD itself and this is how it attaches to the board and then you have some angle headers that we'll be using and 
this is the actual LCD display. We won't need that till later in the build, so you just put that to the side for now, but that's what actually gives you the readout from the board. And then you end up with, uh, this is a RPSMA edge connector. That's what you're gonna put this antenna. This is the antenna that came, it's not in the package, it comes separately, but the antenna will go onto that connector. And then you get some uh, a push button on a wire and a uh, some of the soldering wire we had mentioned earlier. Now all of this is going to end up in a black arrow case, uh, not in the case that uh, Egg Timer sells. Uh, this is the pan device I'm going to use for this build. I have two different kinds. This is the one with the big huge jaws that fit this large board and I use a couple different uh, tweezers, a pointy one and a flat one. But this pan device head is, is a little bit different. and um, it's, it's a great one to have uh, in your kit. So the first thing up is the five volt connect uh, re voltage regulator. Uh, and you can see where it goes right there on the board. And just pointing out here that you, even though we wrote on it, double check, make sure it's the right <laughs> voltage regulator going into that five volt spot on the board. And in order to do these voltage regulators, I like you just uh, tin the large pad, um, move the regulator into place with your tweezers and you got to make sure all of those little pins are lined up properly on the the pads opposite the large pad once that's once it's in place and you're you're happy with it just let it cool for a second to make sure it sticks in place and then we're going to solder the three pins on the back uh, you should wait 30 seconds between each of the pins. Um, I am going to cut out that time in the middle and speed up the video here a little bit so that you don't have to sit and wait for minutes watching this. But when you do this, do take 30 seconds or more between each pin so you don't overheat the chip. Uh, just want to reiterate that. In the video, we've cut out that time. Um, but you do need to wait 30 seconds. So in this case, make sure you get some solder underneath the pin onto the pad for a good connection and then a nice tent of solder on top of the pin. Once that's done, go back and re-solder that large pad and you, you do want to get some a decent amount of solder here on top. It acts as a, a bit of a heat sink. Um, for the voltage regulator itself. So go ahead and get a nice tent on top of there and you're good to go. Now here's the first set of um, capacitors we're gonna be putting in. These are 10 UF ones. These are the ones that come in the uh, clear plastic carrier. So make sure you're using the correct capacitors here. And this is the method that we'll be using for all of the surface mounted um, small parts anyway, where you tin one of the pads and then use your tweezers to get your component in place um, and you know heat the pad you just tinned and once it's uh, in the right spot remove the heat and then you've got that component tacked in um, and you can see it again here on the bottom one um, and like I said this is for all of the uh, you know service mounted resistors and capacitors uh, you're going to do this uh, quite a few times on this board and then once you get the component tacked in properly, uh, I like to turn the board around a lot. You'll see me do that in this build. Um, then go ahead and solder in both sides uh, so that the component's soldered in securely. You do want to get a little bit of solder underneath the, uh, the end of the component so that's underneath on the pad and giving you a good connection. But you don't want so much that it actually bridges between the two pads. That would be a bad thing. So make sure you have a good tent on both sides, securely soldered in, but not uh, so much that you bridge underneath. And we'll show one more here at regular speed. Uh, this is a, a 22 UF um, capacitor. This one comes in the red striped carrier, uh, the clear plastic carrier. So once again, you really need to make sure you've got the right one here. They look identical uh, pretty much. So don't don't put the wrong capacitor in the wrong spot or else 
uh, you will definitely have a board that won't work at the end and it'll be very difficult to tell which ones are which because these capacitors aren't marked in any way so next thing up we're gonna get that 3.3 volt uh, voltage regulator on and it's gonna go on exactly the same way as the 5 volt just make sure you double check that um, the markings on there and and you have that 3 3 at the end to make sure that you didn't uh, put the wrong one in the in the wrong place so once you're confident that you've got the right voltage regulator and uh, it's the same procedure tin that large pad get it lined up properly on all four pads the large pad and the three small ones uh, inspect it make sure it's good and then go ahead and solder in uh, the pads you are waiting between each of these 30 seconds uh, but uh, once again we're speeding this up uh, both the video and the the time lapse and in, in, in between each solder so that you don't have to sit here and watch it but do make sure you are giving it a solid 30 seconds at least between each of these solder points and now we are going to start so sp speeding up uh, the surface mounted ones as well uh, next thing up are these 10k resistors mark 103 uh, now that you've seen one go in or a few of these go in now there's no reason to sit here through these in real time uh, what after that it's a, a 1k resistor marked 102 right next to those 103s and then uh, a 0.1 UF capacitor here that goes in and then another one of the 10k resistors uh, marked 103 And now the next thing we're going to put in is the large Atmel chip. Now this uh, processor, this is a little bit different. Um, the, the pins, as you can see, probably aren't going to line up. They're going to be a little wide. So just gently push them together. You don't, try, you know, you got to be careful. You don't want to break the pins here. You don't want to mess up the the whole processor. Just gently push them together. And once you get it close, you can. There's always a couple pins that don't quite line up. Just take your tweezers and push them into place, and then the whole chip should just drop in securely and flat uh, go ahead and just solder turn the board over and solder the I like to solder the opposite two pins um, and then just inspect your board make sure it's still flat uh, you don't want to jam it all the way down that's not the way this this uh, processor is designed to sit above the PCB a little bit so this is how it should look when it's properly aligned make sure that notch is lined up with the silk screen notch on the board and then once you're happy with the alignment and the um, uh, and how it's sitting on the board, go ahead and solder all the pins. I'm going to speed this up. Once again, you don't need to sit here in real time, but a nice little tent of solder on each pin. Um, now for the uh, resonator, you have to bend those pins 90 degrees and just use a pair of tweezers. It's nothing special. Not sure if there's actually a real special tool for that. I'm not an electrical engineer, but uh, once you get it sitting in there nice, tape it down and then solder the three pins on the other side of the board. With that component in, uh, the next thing up is the buzzer. Pretty simple. Uh, it's not it's not uh, polarized, so just put it in either way. Stick two pins in. Uh, if it's secure enough, go ahead and turn it over if not tape it down with a little bit of tape and turn it over uh, and solder those two pins in now when you go to trim these pins uh, this is kind of one of those first parts of the build where you're, you're gonna have to trim some longer pins on the other side uh, I do recommend securing the pin with a pair of tweezers or something else whatever you want before you snip it with your uh, with your clippers because those little pins can go flying, can hit you in the eye, whatever. The potentiometer uh, goes next. Uh, make sure it's oriented properly and it goes into all three holes and it's laying flat on the board. It doesn't need to be pushed all the way down either, uh, but it, it should be level on the board. Once you have that in, uh, I didn't need to tape mine. It, it was pretty secure, so just turn it over uh, and solder those three pins. Pretty simple through hole component here. Uh, but once you're done with this component, um, 
we're going to move on to the RF module. Now this is a significantly more complicated, I think. Uh, it's not that complicated, but it's definitely more complicated than the other components you've put on so far. So the first thing I like to do is tape it on and get it lined up. You need to get all those little notches lined up with those pads on both sides. You've got two notches and then you've got the, uh, the long string of notches on the other side. Make sure they're all lined up, okay? And then use some masking tape and in this what you're doing here is you want to mask off all of those tiny components at the top on the top of the RF board because if you get any solder on them and get a little splash of solder and bridge any of those components the whole module uh, could be toasted uh, so definitely spend some time in this portion to mask off the RF module very well uh, I you know we do have to put the uh, RPMSM a connector on uh, antenna connector on later but we'll get to that but at the top uh, all you got to do is heat up the uh, pad in the in the notch of the RF module a little bit get some solder on there and this is another one of these cases where you want enough solder to get on the pad underneath the connector and into that little you know notch but not so much that you've gone all the way over into the hole so we're gonna do one on one side and the middle one on the other to hold make sure the board is all uh, is held in place but for here I'm only putting enough to just fill the notch up a little bit I don't want to get too much on because that RPMSA uh, antenna connector is gonna have to slide in and if you put too much solder on it'll be it's hard to actually put the uh, the connector on later now you once again just like the voltage regulators you need to wait 30 seconds or more between each one of these soldering uh, joints but we're going to speed up the film here and cut out the uh, the waiting time in the middle so this is going to go very quickly but this actually took about you know five minutes to get all these because you, you have to wait um, so do each notch uh, and then go back and make sure they're all well soldered. If any of them look a little light, go ahead and and um, fill those in. Now, next up, we are going to put this RPMSA connector on. I like to tin one of the pads and just stick the connector on there and kind of tack it on with the solder. Um, and at this point, I have not filled up the notch on the RF module um, yet. So when I go to solder the RPMSA pin on that side and the middle pin I will fill in those uh, you know solder that pad all the way across um, you need quite a bit of solder here so I'm using actually a thicker soldering uh, wire here it's still a Kester same brand same uh, type of soldering wire just a thicker uh, uh, diameter uh, so do your best to get the, the uh, RPMSA connector one of the pins to the board like that now it's not going to move anywhere and you can be pretty a little more aggressive with uh, with your soldering and you do want to get a pretty good chunk of solder on each one of these pins not enough obviously to bridge over to the other pins or or get up under the RMF RF module but you are going to be screwing and unscrewing um, the antenna onto this so by if you don't have a decent amount of solder on here the uh, the connector could come off so once again, this in this portion here, you're saying I need to make sure that that pad is connected to the RF module. Now go back, put it, uh, enough solder on the other side of the the other pin to make sure that the antenna is secure. And then we're, and then when you move on to that middle one, once again, you do have to make sure that pad is also connected to the RF module. But that middle pin is round and it doesn't quite sit on the board it's actually above it a little bit so it's a little tougher you're gonna have to kind of get your iron down in there um, melt some solder up underneath and then bridge that gap um, during this portion of the soldering but once you're done it should look something like that then turn it over and do the same thing to the two pins on the other side of the board this is a good opportunity to point out that one of the things you're not seeing on camera is that I am cleaning the soldering iron after each and every solder I do. Uh, I have brass wool off to the side and uh, I clean off the tip. 
I ha- I do recommend you do that. It's uh, just obviously it's good soldering practice, and it does make sure that your soldering iron is consistently delivering uh, heat. Uh, that corrosion that that you get on the you can actually see a little bit right here. I did not clean it after that one, but you you can see how that uh, corrosion on the end of the tip can start to decrease the amount of heat. Uh, transfer that your iron has so if you want to keep it efficient make sure you're cleaning it off every time the next component up is the 16 pin socket strip this is the strip that the pins go into the female portion Uh, you put the pins through the board from the top so that you can put your this is where the lcd module itself is going to actually connect into so tape it on and then go ahead and i like to do the outer two pins um, and then check your the other side of your board. Make sure that the the socket uh, is still flat to the board and everything's nice and uh, vertical. And then go ahead and solder all the rest of the uh, pins on securely. Um, and and this is the LCD module itself, uh, the screen. And on the back side of it, you put the short pins of the 16 pin header strip in, tape that down, and then solder that the same way Uh, once again do the two end pins check to make sure the whole thing is level and and, uh, perpendicular to the board Um, this one's kind of both these are important because if you have these off if they're angled a little bit your lcd module won't actually sit flush or properly on the board won't sit flat so make sure these are these this this 16 pin socket and the 16 pin header are perpendicular to the board once you're comfortable that you've got it in right go ahead and solder all the pins um, and then go back and make sure that they're all uh, soldered nicely and when you're done it should fit onto the socket like this and this is what it should look like the next thing up is all of the angle headers that you need to put on and these are where they go they're the two three pin headers and the one four pin header now i like to use some uh, dupont connectors that i have laying around some old ones just to keep them from angling down right like it, it it's hard to tape them when there's no connector on there and keep them flat so i just put some old connectors on there and then tape it down and it keeps them nice and flat solder those in and now you're going to need a battery cable i'm using a just a jst um, cable for a a 2s lipo uh, make sure you get the polarity right here uh, as chris notes in a lot of the instructions sometimes the some of these cables that you get the cheap ones you can get like off amazon and stuff m- the polarity might be wrong um, make sure you've got test them get the right polarity and then if if they're done right then you, the red cable goes in the plus black cable goes in the minus and then it should line up with your battery we need a bridge wire here i'm going to remove this later so i don't want to put a lot of solder this is just to test the board i'm going to put a bridge wire in the switch uh, location i am actually going to use the push button switch later but for now i'm just going to put this switch in tape it uh, put this uh, bridge wire on tape it on and then solder the other side and you'll see i'm not going to use a whole lot of solder here because i i am going to take this off later Uh, when i do put it in the case i will use the push button but I, I would like to test the board, uh, and the easiest way to do that is make sure we've got a little uh, a bridge wire in there. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is what it should look like when you're all done. And to test it, just attach your battery. And if everything worked out properly, you should hear some beeps, and you should get your screen to come on. It should go through its, identify its, uh, the version it's on the the firmware and then go through a status screen and then it should start trying to find uh, your GPS transmitter or the TRS or ho- whatever mode you have it in um, since we don't have the push button on here right now that's we'll test that later we can be pretty confident that the board is good and so there you have it uh, we are not going to show the mounting here but later on this is where you, pu- you would attach the backlight switch This is where we're going to touch the push button switch, the button that we would use to go through all of the programming. And then this is used, these uh, three pin headers are used to attach the different modules, the voice module, the GPS module, and the Bluetooth module. Uh, And we can go, we'll go through that when we build out the case. But this one works. Everything worked out well. Hope it works out for you. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. Thanks.